In the last video, we saw how we could improve the stability of on-off control by giving up some of our speed and or accuracy. If we don't want to give up so much of our goals, another approach to improve the control is to try a different algorithm. Our on-off control algorithm might not be the best choice for what we're doing, positioning one object relative to another object. For example, imagine that you would use the on-off control algorithm for the task of positioning your car relative to a stoplight. Here's what you would do. Get your car up to a constant speed driving towards the stoplight. Then, when you reach the stoplight, suddenly slam on your brakes. You can't actually stop on a dime, so when you finally do come to a stop in the middle of the intersection, you would throw your car into reverse and slam on the gas pedal. You reverse full speed backwards until your car reaches the stoplight again, at which point you again slam on the brakes. You again overshoot the stoplight, so you shift into forward and put pedal to the metal again. You continue doing this until the light finally turns green and you head off to repeat this process at the next light. If you actually did this, you would probably hurt someone and you would definitely destroy your car. What good drivers actually do is very different than this. They see the stoplight ahead, approximate the distance between their car and the light, and begin to slow down before reaching the light. The closer they are to the light, the slower they drive. In this way, they can come to a smooth stop at the light without throwing the car into reverse at all. This kind of control algorithm is broadly termed linear control. Instead of using a single speed that is either turned on or off, the speed is adjusted based upon the relative positioning between the two objects. The most simple type of linear control is called proportional control. In this algorithm, the speed is calculated as a constant known as a gain, times the error, the difference between where the object is and where we want it to be. Let's try this in our code. To use proportional control for our rack and pinion, we need to change the speed of the motor based upon the error in the rack and pinion positioning. So the first thing we need to do in our code is create a variable to calculate the error. Scroll back up to the very top of the code, and let's add that here. We'll make this an integer. We also need to create a variable to hold the constant, which in the equation was represented as kp. We'll make this a floating point value. For now, set it equal to 1.0. Later on in this same video, we'll look at the effects of changing the value of this constant. Now, scroll down in the code. After we get the count, we can calculate the error. The error is the difference between where we want to be which is the variable target count one, and where we actually are, which is the variable count. And I made a mistake here in the code. This should be minus, not equals. Now, if the error is greater than zero, we want the motor to move in the forwards direction. Else, if the error is less than zero or equal to zero, we want to turn in the opposite direction. So here we don't need an if, else, if, else. We can just have if and else. The case where the error is equal to zero will end up turning the motor off anyways because we're calculating speed as being proportional to the error. Let's change this time delay to 10 milliseconds, just like we did in the second case for the second position. 
No, we want to calculate the speed based upon the error instead of having it be a constant value as it is here. So let's go back up to the top of the code and let's create a variable for the speed. Let's make it an integer. Okay, now if the error is greater than zero, we can calculate the speed as being our constant kp times the error. Since the error is positive, we'll get a positive speed. However, we don't want the speed to ever be greater than 100 because that's the largest value we can write to our compare of the PWM. So if the speed is greater than 100, we'll set it equal to 100. Then we'll write the speed value as the compare. Else, that is, if the error is less than or equal to zero, we need to calculate the speed as negative kp times error. That's because our speed value is what we're writing to the compare, and the compare value can never be negative. So if the speed is greater than 100, we'll set the speed equal to 100. And then we'll write the speed here. Now I want to do the same thing in the second positioning. So let's copy this. And then let's paste it down here. Make sure you change the target count to target count 2. Now let's get the LCD display code and put that in the second loop also. Copy these lines and then paste them down here. Make sure you fix this error that I made in my code. This should be a minus sign, not an equal sign. And you have to fix that error in the other loop also. So if you go up, make sure that's a minus sign right here instead of an equal sign. Now let's program the PSOC. Make sure your PSOC is plugged into the computer and make sure that the external power supply is unplugged. Then click Program the PSOC. Pull the slider all the way to the right, reset the PSOC, and then plug in the external power supply. And let's observe the motion. Notice that we have very little overshoot in each move. The move is pretty smooth. But we do have quite a bit of error. The error is the difference between where we want to be and where we are. It looks like in every move we have slightly less than about 10 counts of error. Let's go back to the code and change the value of kp. Set the value of kp to 2, and then program the PSOC. Slide the slider to the right, hit the reset button, and then plug in the external power supply. Watch the motion for a while and see what you observe. We should see that the instability has increased a little bit. We have more overshoot now than we had when KP was 1, but the motion is still stable. Also, you may notice that you have slightly less error now than before. Let's try and change KP to 5 and see what happens.
Pull the slider to the right, reset the P-Sock, and plug in the external power supply. With KP equal to 5, we've made our system go unstable. In general, as you increase KP, you'll have less stability, less error, and greater speed. If you make KP large enough, you can make your system go unstable. We would like to find a value of KP that makes the motion fast and accurate, but also still stable. Let's try and change KP to 4. Program the PSOC. Slide the slider to the right. Hit the reset button. Then plug in the external power supply. The oscillations here are not as large of a magnitude as before, but our system is still unstable. Remember that instability means that the oscillations never stop. Let's try KP equal to 3. Program the PSOC. Slide the slider to the right, hit the reset button. Now our system is stable. We should notice that there are still some oscillations, and the accuracy has actually increased. We're only off by around 5 or so every time. When we are trying to find the right value for KP or our other control gains, this process is called tuning the controller. Just now, we were tuning our proportional controller kind of by eye and by a process of trial and error where we try a value of KP and then observe the result. We're trying to get a good value of KP that gives us low oscillations, good stability, a fast motion, and an accurate positioning. This process of tuning by trial and error is not the most efficient method, especially when we're tuning by eye. It would be really helpful if we had some quantitative way to measure how good our controller actually is. In the next video, we'll learn about a method of communicating between our PSOC and a laptop or desktop computer that will allow us to actually measure the goodness of a controller.